What's going on, brother? What's up, JW? Where you been hiding, man? <clears throat> Shit, I've been working, man, always. But, uh, you know, this election, in terms of policy, both candidates are similar. If you understand the geopolitical spectrum with America withdrawing from globalization, you know, in terms of restructuring our naval fleet, withdrawing from uh, having destroyer ships provide security for these cargo ships, uh, <clears throat> we, we've... Invested in uh, Ford carriers, which are these huge ships that exceed the total global military capacity other than like five countries. No countries can go to war with us. So what we're doing is investing in local manufacturing, which this is pivotal because a vote for Trump is a return to tradition, a return to aligning with God's intention for us, a calling to work hard, provide for your family, male exceptionalism. Kamala is going to push that diversity, equity, inclusion agenda. Any society that has too much diversity can't have cohesion. We need an overarching narrative that'll unify the public and so we can get back to producing so we can generate profits to redistribute. I know there's a lot of people in here interested in reparations. We need to get our economy back on track. When we're talking about equal opportunities in comparison to equitable opportunities, meaning a lot of people say Kamala's not for neo-Marxist ideologies. If you remember when she ran with Biden, she had the commercial talking about not everyone starts from the same place. The goal is to get everyone ending up at the same place. When you remove that merit meritocratic hierarchical structure from society, you get stifled innovation. This is what the big tech overlords, big pharmaceutical companies want. They want a complacent, uh, masculine uh, male population. We need to return to masculine exceptionalism which is the traditional, uh, you know, values of this country. We've witnessed a takeover by elites that radically oppose American values, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. We're all blessed to be in America, these opportunities. And in this world, your perception is the main factor in your future probabilities. If you believe that you're going to be a victim of society, you're increasing the probabilities of experiencing that. If you're grateful, gratitude is everything. You got to be grateful to convince yourself to keep pushing, go to work every day, come home to your family, be grateful to provide for your kids, have a beautiful woman that's nurturing feminine. We need to get back to these these values. The nuclear family unit is a major issue. Right. I see. No, I see. No. We need to get back to celebrating strong men. What what happened to the American ticker tape parades where, where men used to ball out and we'd celebrate? You know, we need to get back to producing and being sacrificial. These tech overlords want us consuming. You see the dog shit culture that they force on us. All the left has infiltrated our institutions. The, the nuclear family unit, entertainment, you, athletes. You see some more wear a MAGA hat and, they, and they're reprimanded. You know, we don't have diversity of thought, creativity. We have conformity. We have a totalitarian environment uh, in, imposed upon us, top down imposition rather than emergent. Now, with that being said, how do you feel we should handle situations where systemic racism is still prevalent and it still creates a system of deprivation, particularly anti-Black deprivation, where Black people in particular, we, we suffer the brunt of it with lack of job opportunities, with lack of funding opportunities, with lack of quality educational opportunities. How should that be handled by any politician, the right of the, but they both on anti do you, Go ahead. Do you believe that politics is downstream from culture or the inverse, that culture is downstream from politics? Um, culture is a result of the environment that is the, and if the politics are based on and steeped in white supremacy, the culture will be action to that and we well i mean this is this is the problem is if you remember during the 2020 uh summer of love if you will there was this phrase whiteness we were talking about last time how the smithsonian institute had this pamphlet talking about whiteness being delayed gratification nuclear family unit being 
educated, all these terms that allow for one to develop themselves and attain upward mobility have been vilified. You know, what what sense of white supremacy do you see in our system? Of course, there's always going to be bad apples, but this is the most free country in the world where uh, you can associate yourself in anything you want. It's just about meritocracy. If you if you got the skills to pay the bills, you can make anything you want of yourself in this country. And we're on the cusp of losing that opportunity. So when did Nih- go? Okay. Nihilism, okay. nihilism is running deep and we're having a, a meaning crisis amongst males. OK, so we need to get back to a better culture. Go down. So when did white supremacy disappear? Well, if you look, <clears throat> there, there's a there's an article that showed that the search for racism had been declining, diminishing for years up into uh, early 2010. If you remember the Occupy Wall Street after the 2008 Great Recession, there was a lot of heat coming down on these corporate back Wall Street entities. And that's when they started to subvert that attention from from uh, the working class struggle towards the identity struggle. All these corporations started incentivizing other corporate structures to virtue signal that they were about social justice in order to receive tax breaks and, and loopholes. That social justice and that and that social justice was to invite a bunch of LGBT people who are white. Ex- exactly. And that's right. the point. Is that these these so, so let, me, let me let me mute you while I while I, come on now. Yeah, they use the suffering of black people to turn around and say, hey, we need some minority inclusion because these black people are suffering. So let's let some white LGBT people in here. Let's let some Asian people in here. They're minorities. Let's let some Hispanic people in here. They're minorities. Let's let disabled people in here. They're minorities. So we still have the anti-black racism. And then they try to pretend that they remedy it by adding minority groups. And many of these minority groups share the same anti-black sentiments, sir. So that's something that we can't ignore, right? Go ahead, J-Dub. Un- go ahead and unmute your microphone, Mr. Lucas. We know the atrocities, the, the lingering uh, effects of racism, Jim Crow, et cetera. I'm an advocate for reparations, specifically those that were impacted by Jim Crow laws where People weren't being paid equal values to their peer, uh, e- equal wages to their peers. That's not what reparations. <clears throat> that's not. Reparations. That, that's what I'm most of an advocate for. When okay. when the when the legislation. Uh, see, that's the thing. You can't make up your version of reparations. See, that's well, that that's just my opinion, of course. Right, right, but no, no, no. We've we've specified what reparations is for. Reparations is going to be for slavery. And it's going to be paid to foundational Black Americans, um, those of us who have a lineage to the descendants of freedmen. So we've already defined that we're not going to do reparations for Jim Crow, because that includes every damn body. A lot of people can say that they were affected by Jim Crow somehow. You got Latinos talking about Juan Crow. We ain't doing that at all. Reparations is for slavery here on American soil. Ladies and gentlemen, but go ahead. Well, the beautiful thing about it is if we can reorient ourselves back to traditional values and start producing again, like I said earlier, America withdrawing from globalization, the World Economic Forum agenda, the Great Reset, where these entities like BlackRock are buying everything up. They're going to exploit us for our labor and for for rent seeking opportunities. And uh, the power law distributions are going to become even more asymmetrical. If we get Trump back in, we have a chance to start profiting again and start getting back to the traditions, men producing. We we have to admit there's fundamental differences in cognitive capacities between men and women, whether we're talking about brain volume size, the lateralization of the brain, allowing men to focus long term, be sacrificial, discipline and produce products that are that increase the value and standard of living for others that mm-hmm. way we don't have artificial manufacturing of demand for the supply side the problem is that these big tech companies have become bigger than the government and there's no boundary on the predatory aspects of the market they can data mine and they're shifting our consumption patterns you see the culture conspicuous consumption is the problem faking it to make it We need to get back to respecting people that are aligned with God's intent for them. Those that are sacrificial, disciplined, bringing value to society, pulling, bringing more. Let me me slow JW down. As you guys can see, 
Um, JW does. He's he does what we call plebeite babbling. We, you heard of plebiscite babbling? He kind of does a lot of plebeite babbling. There's plebiscite babbling, and then there's plebeite babbling, and he does a lot of plebeite babbling. So you gotta excuse him. Now, Jay, let's let's go ahead and wrap it up because we got some other calls. Hey, brother, there's no babbling here. Is this a little plebeite babbling? It's okay. By the way, Jay, and, and my, for those who don't know, Jay W, he's a He's a a well known producer. He produces, with you know, contrary to his views, he produces a lot of black rappers, and he has a lot of hit records. Who are you working with now, Jay? Jay, go ahead. My bad. Uh, listen, I've produced a lot of big records, Little Uzi XO Tour. I've, I've sold over sixty million records, and I'm vocal in uh, my disapproval of the culture. You know, the single parenthood rights, yeah. irresponsibility uh, in, in mating practices. Men need to get back to being loyal to their woman, not sleeping around with without being responsible. We need we need fathers. We need a return to actual ethics and morality. You know, I'm not seeing that from the victim mentality group. I, lo I love people that <clears throat> oh, wait. We acknowledge that. OK, why are there so many single parenthood's parents in the victim mentality group? Why is there so many single parents? Well, obviously it began when they assassinated JFK, brought in Lyndon B. Johnson with the with the Model Cities Act, and the, and the poverty system started to incentivize women to marry the government, have baby fathers on the side paying under the table. Stop. Let's stop there. Let's, let's, let's cover that because that's a good talking point. So the government incentivized black women to marry the government. Why did black women marry the government? Why, why were black women in a position? Like I said, it, it's a, it's a hustle to to get the government check to have baby fathers paying on the table what they can still allow. Well, so if black women were doing great, they wouldn't need to do that hustle. So that means they weren't doing great. Why were black women not doing great? Go ahead. There's something that made them want to get that hustle on. They could not have been doing great. So what made black women say, let's get that little hustle? We, we know we know the atrocities of the past, uh, uh, the long lingering effects of slavery and, and the system, but the system's changed. Oh, no, no. Now, are, are you familiar with the concept? Hold on now, hold on, because you're a white man, I want, and I'm a black person. And uh, you're telling me about the culture that I live in, that I've seen firsthand, and that I've lived, you're telling me as an outsider, you just acknowledge that the problem was systematic racism. That's that's the thing that caused a lot of the women to need resources. So, why well, let's look at now how black women are the most educated group in society, and it's not necessarily paying off. Just to be honest, no, they're the most enrolled in schools. They're they're enrolled. So it's not paying off because a lot of them are enrolled, but they're well, the men, men and women have different capabilities. Historically, we've evolved to be providers. Men, uh, you, you know, on average, OK, now, men and women you're talking, you're saying a bunch of talking points. See, when it's time to get to the nitty gritty. Oh, listen, oh, the point is, is that male exceptionalism. You're using a bunch of talking points, sir. These are talking points. A lot of black women are in school, but a lot of them are not getting no big time, big paying jobs like that. They're not. And that's because of the same systematic deprivation of racism. It's still there. Yeah, a lot of black women are enrolled in schools, but them jobs aren't out there like that. Those big paying jobs are just not out there like that. And that's because of racism and anti-black racism. That still exists, sir. So we're not going to deny that, no matter what part. Brother, I'll... Go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead. What's going on? It's hard when you're muting me up. You know, sometimes it doesn't let me back on. But I'll just say this. Are you familiar with epigenetics? Epi meaning above or on top of your genetics? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You understand you understand the trauma that's been coded, been encoded on top of a lot of black Americans uh, genetics on, on, you know, and then the environments kind of activate these epigenetic markers and it, and it limits the potential of individuals based on perceptions of their ancestors. 
at some point we need to get rid of the victim's mentality and get that victor mentality back in effect. But how can you get rid of the victim mentality when the victimizers are still victimizing? Because they're still victimizing. In, in what sense? We've talked about white supremacy and how the, the greatest earners in our society are Asians, are, are immigrants. White oh, people, white not. people are not. They're not. They're allowed to come over here and they're elevated, sir. And they're elevated as buffer groups against us. They use them as weapons against us. They specifically elevate them in order to create a buffer against us, sir. So the Asians are used as weapons and pawns. So that doesn't negate white supremacy. That's another form of white supremacy. Bufferism is a form of white supremacy. They allow, the key word is allow. They don't bust up illegal Asian massage parlors and trap houses. You never see Asians on the six o'clock news running around in handcuffs with all the guns and fentanyl and opium that they sell. So they allow them to do certain things. That's white supremacy, sir. I mean, we can go back and forth over semantics, but facts are facts. You can't say, for instance, that black on black crime is similar to any other instance. Now, I know you're going to react negatively. There's a lot of there's a lot of bias. We need to disprove our bias and be open minded so we can get solutions to these cultural issues. But crime is not the issue. <clears throat> Crime is crime. The white supremacists commit. Listen, when, when you look. The white supremacists commit more murders than anybody in their protected class. Listen, 3% of the population. When the white supremacists get to murdering, um, the dominant society turns them into heroes. There's no black version of Kyle Rittenhouse. A black person can't go out there preemptively shooting people and then get paraded around as a hero, sir. So we're not going to go to the violence thing. Nobody. Violence. Sir, are you defending pedophiles that, that Kyle Rittenhouse shot that were using the N-word? Yeah, you don't you don't shoot people and then look at their record. He was defending himself. Oh, he wasn't. You didn't know that those guys had a record. He had no idea about those guys. They record. were attacking him. No, no, no. He was out there pointing that gun at people because he planned on going out there to get folks. He said it preemptively. There was a video of that man talking about he wished he had a gun for these protesters, and that's what he did. He went out and there. you're keeping them alive. He went out there with the white supremacist group, the Proud Boys, and he was working with the cops and they were planning on an ambush. And that's exactly what they did. This is white supremacy where you get to kill people and folks make excuses for you. This is the proof of white supremacy right here, sir. So well, at the end of the day, when we when we have domestic white supremacy is you going around killing people and then they say it's self-defense. That, sir, is white supremacy. Thank you for proving that, J.W. No. Let me get some more calls. Thank you so much. I don't want to hear no more pleba white babbling. All right. That's white supremacy in a nutshell, where you go around killing people and then they can justify it by claiming it was self-defense. Just like up there in... um. Um, New York, there's a trial right now with Jordan Neely. It was a special needs black man on a train, hungry, kind of talking to himself, and a suspected white supremacist killed him, choked him from behind, and now everybody's, the, the dominant society, they're making excuses for that um, suspected white supremacist talking about he was trying to defend the train. That's white supremacy, sir, when you get to kill people and folks make excuses for you. That's white supremacy in a nutshell, and it's alive and well right now. All right, let's get chapped. What's your name? Chapterine? Chapterine in the house. Unmute your microphone. All right, chapter, since you're not unmuting, I'm going to go to another caller, and we're going to go with T.S. Giselle in the building, who's a huge Kamala Harris supporter. And T.S. Giselle is in Georgia, from what I understand. Is that correct, T.S. Giselle? T.S. Giselle, unmute your... Greetings. It's um, the vice president of the southeast of the K-Hive. We are on the verge of history. Uh oh Black... Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. 
Oh, I was gonna. We are on the verge of history. I am beaming with excitement. Um, I'm very nervous. Um, it's election day on the East Coast, um, but what a um, monumentous moment in American history. We are on the cusp, just hours away, 270 electoral college votes away from the first female president of the United States. Um, in this moment, I think of iconic Black women in American history and the spirit of those women. Um, I pray that um, they cover and protect Kamala um, through today and, you know, the spirit of Coretta Scott King, Fannie Lou Hamer, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, just iconic Black women. And we... Why would this spirit go to her? To We... You mean the spirit of Gandhi, right? What other spirit is going to go to Kamala? The spirit of Gandhi, the spirit of Dinesh D'Souza, who else? Come on now. I don't like how you interrupted me while I was giving my soliloquy. Um, but I am beaming with excitement on the cusp of a female president. I wish that I could share this moment with my own mother. Um, but she's with me in spirit. Um, she was a huge fan of Kamala. And I'm excited for this new dawn. And I seen on the cake is the first female president happens to be a minority, a double minority, not a, a Caucasian woman, but a Black and Southeast Asian woman. Um, I'm thrilled and excited. Um, a woman who champions reproductive oh. rights. Okay. Um, oh. A woman who... Hold on. Reproductive rights? Now, how are you talking about some reproductive rights and you can't even reproduce? What are you talking about? So, I wanted to give my opening statement. Then I was going to gather you. So I'm, I'm glad. So if that, but I'm gathering you. How are you talking about some your reproductive rights and you don't reproduce? How does that work? Seriously, how so does that's that work? very insulting to insinuate that I can't reproduce. I, how? I again, it's 2024. There's a lot of things that are plausible, um, but you're in, incorrect. With with that being said, um, I think it's important. That I mean, is there some kind of scientific circles that we don't know about? What are you talking about? I think it's very important that American women have protection over their bodies from the government. Okay, no, no, you're talking about abortion, something that you can't have. You can't get abortions. That's either true or not true. That's not an insult. That's the biological fact. When you talk about reproduction rights, Kamala's reproductive rights is abortion. You can't have an abortion. Unless you're pulling some out your bussy that I don't know about. I don't know. There's new stuff out here that I probably don't know about. Yeah. So, well, so what you're trying to do is to, like, you put people like you and that are supporters of Trump and Black conservatives, Black Republicans, you guys push these social issues. Um, how I identify has no impact on you and I don't like what you're doing now. Um, I, I have a right to ask questions about um, political agendas. That's what we're talking about. And you specified that you were for uh, some reproductive rights. And it's not really making sense when you talk about reproductive rights, which is abortion. So I have... Reproductive rights is abortion. So, so I have sisters that are biological women. I have nieces. I have a niece that's pregnant as we speak. Um, I have best friends that are biological cisgendered women. Um, and it is important that those women, those cisgendered biological women, you know, have protection over their body. I'm very, I'm 100% pro-choice. I think that it is a woman's choice whether she wants to build children or not. I think it's pretty gross and disgusting um, that Roe v. Wade was overturned and sent back to the states because now, you know, there's women in Texas that, you know, don't have access to proper 
care, you know, very similar to as if they were living in a totalitarian third world country. But that's just one issue why I support Kamala. Um, of course, uh, she's a, uh, a huge... My thing, if, if women have the right resources, that would have a big difference in child rearing and the whole nine, because a lot of women have to get abortions because they just can't afford the kid. Um, and I think that traces back to deprivation of resources. And, you know, I believe in people should have a choice. I don't believe, I don't think we should have, it should be encouraged that there's a damn abortion clinic on every damn corner. I don't believe in that because see what they do. Um, the left, they sit up here and promote, hey, be as ratchet and as sexually loose and fluid as you want to be, and don't worry about it. There's an abortion clinic right on the corner, so don't worry about it. And when you get those abortions, you know, hopefully some insurance will cover that, and, you know, we'll make some money off that. And then we can get some of those stem cells up out that fetus that you got and do some experiments on that. So yeah, come on down. We we need some some experimental material over here. So they really promote that to the black community. Y'all better understand the big picture here. Yeah, yeah, of course they're going to promote that. There's a reason why they got at the Kamala rallies, they got a bunch of twerking. Who they got? Meg the Stallion, Glorilla, Cardi B, all the the wet AP rappers rapping about coochie ratchetness. Sex and a bunch of dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, be ratchet like them. Black women, this is who you should be. Be like them. And if you get knocked up, don't worry about it. We got a plan. We got a eugenics. I mean, oops, a Planned Parenthood office right on the corner. Go ahead and get that baby scraped on up out of you, and we'll get that fetus and we'll do some research on it, just like we did with Henrietta Lacks. Yeah, you, you see? You see the game that they play with us? Yeah, they, they get access to our, our genetic material. Family, did y'all hear in Texas, I talked about this not long ago, they found out that there were a bunch of um, unclaimed bodies being donated to medical facilities out there in Texas. Y'all heard about that? And then you look at the list and most of the people are damn black. Y'all looked that up. This was recently in Texas. And people were like, hey, what the hell? What the, where are these damn bodies coming from? There's a bunch of, uh, uh, just a whole plethora of unclaimed dead bodies that were being donated to medical facilities out there. And a lot of them were black. And people are like, hey, hold on. Now where do you, where y'all getting these people? So yeah, when y'all see black folks missing, yeah. Don't be surprised where they turn up. You see? Yeah, this is something that we're going to have to cover in the new Hidden Colors movies. By the way, y'all know we're talking about doing another Hidden Colors. That's long overdue. That is long overdue, ladies and gentlemen. We got to touch on that. That's some heavy stuff we got to touch on. Shout out to everybody in here. We're in here deep. Yeah, and I still need ideas from the family about some of the topics we can cover in the new Hidden Colors movie. Um, what we want to talk about is um, some of the, uh, the things. We're going to talk about some of the prosperous Black areas that were created after emancipation. We want to talk about some of the um, Black women writers to really go in on some of the, the sisters that were really doing phenomenal things, the Harriet Tubman's Sojourner Truth, the Ida B. Wells, um, just so many sisters going into Dr. Welsing, um, so many sisters and talk about the work they've done. Also, we want to talk about how we were the progenitors of the medical industry here in the Americas. I want to do a piece on that because a lot of us don't know that. I want to get into the healing practices that we pioneered as foundational Black Americans. That's going to be a good piece in the film. And then talk about some of the innovations um, that we've pioneered as well. So it's, it's long overdue, family, for new hidden colors because we're getting a lot of... Um, 
revisiting and revamping of history, like the guy called up, JW called up with all of that, ain't no more racism stuff. No, we're not going to play that game where they pretend you practice racism, but pretend you ain't doing it. And one part of racism is erasing history. See, that's the thing they want to do. That that JW guy, he's doing, and the, the dominant society, everybody's getting on code against us, family. The name of the game is to pretend ain't no racism. What racism? Racism ended 100 years ago. What? Ain't no racist policies no more. Everybody just, just need to pull themselves up. So they're going to start trying to erase white supremacy and act like it doesn't exist and then superimpose people on our history, ladies and gentlemen, um, especially in the, the main people they're getting to do this. They're going to get the Hispanics to do this because they sat up here and did that black and brown nonsense and we went along with the program. So they try to make black and brown both synonymous, which we are not. So now, since black folks then sat here and normalized that black and brown narrative, they're just going to superimpose the brown over our black history, just like they tried to do with hip hop, but we stopped them. They tried to do that with hip hop, but we stopped them. But I told people, even when we were doing microphone check, it's not going to stop with hip hop. It's not going to stop with hip hop. It's going to go all the way across the board. Let me get my sister Nikki here real quick. Sister Nikki, what's up, beloved? Nikki, hop, hop on, dear. Nikki, where you at, beloved? I'm right here. Sorry. There you go. The point you're making about the Latinos is just what I was about to bring up. But the, it, the issue is getting so bad with them. And I'm not saying that Africans and Caribbeans aren't an issue. But I keep going back to that time that the president said, hey, you've got to be working with the Latinos. Yeah, they are just stealing everything from us, and I'm really excited about the movie. Yes, of course, but I'm wondering if we need something specific, like a specific um, hidden colors for the the Latino issue and what they're trying to do to us. I don't know. I don't know, Flex. You let me know. Hey, I mean, I, we can tie it in. You know, we can tie it into the the general film. You know, just to really make it interesting, because there's so many things that we got to cover. So we yeah, can... and and we still have to celebrate Dr. Welsing accordingly, and Absolutely. I'm sure we will. Absolutely. Thank you, Flex. Thank you, beloved. Okay, um, but yeah, man, it's getting real out here. It's getting very, very real out here. Let me let me get some more. Let's get Carrie in here. Let's get Miss Carrie in here. Carrie, hop on, dear. Carrie, hop on, beloved. Carrie. I hate when people, I let folks on and their microphone starts buffering. All right, while we're waiting on Carrie, let's get, um, let me see, let's get Jimmy Pete, Jimmy Peterson. Jimmy Peterson, and no, you know what? Let's get elite football in here. All right, Jimmy Peterson, hop on, man. Yes, sir. Uh, appreciate the space. You, so, is this elite? Is this elite? Yes, sir. Okay, what's up, brother? How are you? I uh, appreciate the space. Uh, your boss, uh, when I first ran into spaces, I didn't know what a FBA was, and I had, I, I had to do, I had to do my my research. So I do appreciate you for that. Now, when we come on the topic of uh, Trump or Kamala, yeah, you know, I I think it's about voting for the lesser of two evils. You either got a Zionist or a Zionist and a communist. And just like the last person you let up, you asked, she said, you said, you can't reproduce. And she goes, it's 2024. We're capable of a lot of things. That's insanity. Yeah. So how am I supposed to, how, how, how can I morally go with the insanity party? They're, look, it's the both, it's the same, with this, they're both the same coin, the different sides, right? You talked about hip hop earlier. What my, you talked about the, the black community, what my boy didn't talk about is the same people and Kanye was right that create the music they own the private prisons and they they instilled welfare they got black men out of the house they created this the single family narrative like they did it um and I think when it does you go back to that movie you talk about I think you know I wonder and I asked someone this the other day I said some white dude said go back to Africa I said all right bitch what country there's 54 homie what country did I come from you don't know 
You don't know. Exactly. They took away our ancient religion, our ancestral religion. Like, what, what, they, they, they erased it. Why? Because I believe Kanye's right. We're the chosen people, man. If Moses is floating down the Nile River in Africa, and then Moses escapes Africa and goes into Israel, I mean, come on, dude, it's right there. And I'll end my land my plan like this. Revelation chapter 1-9. Beware of those who say they are Jews, but are not landed. Thank you so much. Um, Jimmy Pete, are you ready? Jimmy Pete, are you ready? So Jimmy Pete ain't saying nothing. Let's get uh, Mr. Uh, GH. Get Mr. GH or something. All right, Mr. GH, hop on, sir. Yeah. Hello? Brother, where are you? This brother's somewhere ordering some fried rice. Where you at, man? This time of night, brother. This brother's at a bodega somewhere. Mr. GM, where are you at this time of night, bro? Because you're clearly somewhere on the East Coast. Because everything out here is closed. So where are you at, man? All right, so he's getting it together. Let me get him out of here. All right, now when y'all call up when y'all finish ordering your orange chicken. All right. Uh, let me get him out of here. Uh, let's get Fedora the Explorer. Fedora the Explorer, hop on. Go ahead, Fedora the Explorer. Go ahead, man. Come on, man. If y'all get on up here, y'all say your peace. Don't waste time. Fedora, hop on. Okay. Oh, let me get somebody else in here. Let's get Hakeem in here. Let's get Mr. Hakeem in the building. Hakeem, hop on. Yo, what's up, Tariq? What's up, Hakeem? How are you, sir? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I voted today, you know, couch, you know. Yes, um, but what I wanted to say was, what what do you, are you going to be doing a hidden colors like one through five again? No, I go no, 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 no. We're gonna do like a six, like a six. Okay, because yeah. like if you um, because the idea was that I had was, uh, we got so much history that that's all across and in, in all the states. I was thinking like do a format like ten states here. That's one movie, you know, just for the fifty, like that. Another ten, you know, all the way to um five movies. I guess, but I guess that's a little bit too much, but. Yeah. Okay, now brother's got random spoons ideas. Uh, no, we don't need. Don't please don't give me no random spoons ideas. Come on, listen. What you need to do, we need to do forty-seven hidden colors, and let's do them. Let's do it about um jazz, and let's do one about Dizzy Gillespie. Then we'll do one about Miles Davis. Then we'll do one about Herbie Hancock. And okay, I don't okay. God damn, with the random spoons, man. I like I welcome ideas, but that's a horrible idea you just had, brother. <laughs> I welcome ideas, but damn it, that was horrible. Let's get Jeff in here. Oh Lord, don't give me no rhythm spoon. Jeff, what's going on, man? Jeff? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Jeff. How you doing, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. I just wanted to uh, say, first of all, I'm so excited to vote for President Trump tomorrow. I think he will win in a landslide bigly. Um, and I also just wanted to thank you for your insightful coverage throughout this election season. It, you've been you're the real McCoy. You're an insight into your community. And we so much appreciate you for that. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to say I cannot wait for T.S. Giselle's reaction tomorrow but, after Trump uh, wins and Kamala. Look out to that guy that talked to you like three days ago, the guy from Mississippi who was crashing out like crazy oh, i listened uh, to that call about four times it is the funniest hour i've ever heard of just Larry. about anything ever it is amazing you need to make that a regular show but yeah uh, i just wanted to say thank you for your coverage and everybody's now, for president now, Trump. Now, giselle wants to respond to you real quick t.s uh -oh. 
T.S. hop on. T.S. unmute your microphone. Okay. Damn it. Okay. T.S. Giselle hopped on. And hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get T.S. Giselle wants to, to respond. T.S. Giselle hop on. Actually, I didn't hear what he said, um, but I just was very upset with you. I wanted to speak about why I was supporting Kamala, but what I really wanted to say to Rick was, um, I don't know what your next objective is going to be, but I cannot wait. I'm going to be sitting in the marvelous chateau, sipping the finest champagne aged 25 years um, as we elect Madam Vice President Kamala Harris as the 47th president elect of the United States. And then I'm going to host my first Twitter space. And I would love for you to come to me because I'm going to run you in words down for this foolishness that you have been doing on, for an on. entire year. Go down, go down. Now, T.S. Jeff, he's the caller. He said he can't wait until Trump wins so he can tune in and see the sad look on your face. So he wants to see the disappointment in you. That's And I'm glad that you had the space. And I was actually, so Tariq, I'm actually not working at the moment. I've actually got, my doctor has written me out of work. And so I'm just trying to find stuff to do with my day. Um, and wait, wait. I could not wait. Listen. Wait, when did you stop selling bussy? I th did you retire? <laughs> Did you? I think that's what she had to go to the doctor for. Yeah, um, you, uh, broken bussy. Did your bussy get wore out? I mean, damn. Yeah. I have been very clear. I work in corporate America. I have been working um, for my organization for several years. Um, I have a company credit card. I work from home. I travel. Yeah, throughout the corporation is called OnlyFans. So, yes. I, I'm, did you work? Anyway, uh, we're not doing Go ahead. Okay, Lord. All right, T.S. I, I, I don't want to hear no more. Thank you so much. But thank you, Jeff. I appreciate you. It's going to be, tomorrow's going to be very interesting. Let's get Cool H. Let's get this sister in here. Cool H Town Girl. Let's get this lovely sister in here. Hop on in here, dear. Come on. Hey, hey you. What you over there? Hey, my cousin. Though. So listen, you and I, we don't have to talk politics because we've already agreed to disagree, right? But what I did want to ask you, my cousin, I hadn't heard you talk about it, and I apologize if I missed it because I've been batshit crazy busy. Um, did you ever get a chance to see the video of the Uber ride where the um, white chicks were in the back and the little Muslim guy um, was in the front? giving him an Uber ride and he stopped at a red light and he was saying one of his little prayers and the white chick in the back, one of them went crazy and, and maced his ass and all that shit. Did you see that video? Heard about that. I it was maybe in the last 48 hours, maybe last two days, I guess. I wanted yeah. to send it to you, but I was like, oh, I know Cuzzo gets so many DMs. I won't, you know, flood his DMs with this because he's always hip and happening. But I wanted you to... Um, you know, see it and 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 give your commentary, which is always you know really relevant. Um, and some of it, I saw like a little bit of it, but not the whole thing. But I know what you're talking about, though. But so so in reference to that, um, so so I just described the video, right? Exactly what I said. I mean, it was just a regular Uber ride. Two white girls are in the back, little Muslim guys in the front, you know, and everything's on video. Like the white girl just went crazy and she grabbed the little, he didn't do anything. He just had a stoplight, right, saying his little prayers. And she went fucking, you know, white shit, crazy bananas on him. And so, and she got arrested and charged. So here's my question to you. Do you think if Trump wins, worst case scenario for me, right? We know this. If Trump wins, do you think we're going to see a huge spike in attacks like that? That's my question to you, Kazo. Well, it, it ain't going to happen to us. I don't think that's going to happen to us. Now, with, with Muslims, I don't know. They would have to um, holler at themselves. But, I mean, if it's happening now, they're already doing it. I don't know if, if there's going to be an uptick or whatever. If it's already happening, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's the interesting thing. A lot of stuff that goes down now, they start talking about, oh, wait till Trump get an office now. If Trump get an office, it's going to be worse. I mean, it's worse now. What the hell are you talking about? 
Just like when the, the race soldier ran up in the black woman's house and shot this black woman in cold blood. And Biden and Kamala and their deal, they didn't do a damn thing about it. And folks up here talking about some damn Trump. Ooh, man, Trump. See, this is what Trump won't. Well, Trump ain't in office now and ain't nobody doing nothing. See, no, I don't play that game where they sit up here and allow all types of anti-black activities to pop off and then just blame Trump and just blame right wingers. No, it's going on under you. See, I saw that when Obama was in office, when I was traveling all around the country, um, trying to produce justice for people, black folks getting slaughtered left and right, all of these high profile killings, Sandra Bland, Tamir Rice, Mike Brown, Freddie Gray, Trayvon Martin, just all over the country. And the pattern here, Eric Garner, all of these things were happening in Democrat-run cities. That was the pattern. We go to these cities, the mayor is a Democrat, the chief of police is Democrat. All of this stuff was happening under the Democrats. The DOJ is Democrat, the president is Democrat. Nobody's producing no damn justice. We are out in the streets trying to get justice for these people. This happened all under Democrats. But then they want to sit up and talk about Trump. Ooh, Trump. Look at the racism with Trump. No, no. It's happening under you, too. You're not just going to sit there and just pawn it all off on the right wingers. Yeah, they got some racism going on, too. Yes, they do. I ain't denying that. But damn it, the left does, too. And it's deeper. Most of the Karen videos that you see, those are in Democrat cities. When y'all see those Karens calling the cops on people, those are in Democrat cities. Yeah, Mr. G.H.? You're Mr. G.H. Go ahead and unmute your microphone, man. I don't know what's going on. You keep requesting and your phone is janky. What's going on with you, man? Sorry, man. Quick question. What's on your, what's on your mind? Um, how come the white supremacists never ever mentioned that, um, that, that support Trump? How come they never mentioned the connection he's always talking about Israel? Why, why do they always use that as a talking point? but they never criticize him about that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, they, they, the white supremacists say a bunch of stuff, so I don't know. 